Hi everyone, it's Chrissy again, your Life Skills and Deployment Educator at Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. I'm coming to you again with a condensed version of our communication and conflict management brief. I'd actually like to combine the two today because I think that communication and conflict kind of go hand in hand and I'd like to use a little bit of techniques from both. So this video might be a little bit longer than the other ones. Um, I would like to say also that during this global pandemic and in the situation we're all experiencing, if you feel like you're having a little bit more con conflict in your life and maybe more miscommunication than normal, that would be completely uh, normal for everyone else. I think most of us are finding that either um, we are experiencing more communication, um, miscommunication, or we're having a lack of communication. Um, and I actually have noticed, I'll just speak about my work relationships, I noticed that sometimes the people that I communicate face to face with normally um, don't necessarily understand my email etiquette or my email humor. Um, so we're having more miscommunication than we used to in our face to face relationship. Um, I've also found that there's been some improvements. So for example, if um, I have a, a relationship with someone at work and and we just don't necessarily communicate the same way verbally. I find that sometimes if I have very um, to the point outlined emails that we're actually maybe um, getting to be a little bit more efficient in our communication. Um, so consider that as well. If you have um, a situation where you, you feel like this person is just not understanding me, maybe say, hey, can we actually get on the phone for just a little bit so I can get to the point where um, we feel like we are understanding each other a little bit more efficiently. So may, uh, know that you have different ways of communicating as well. Um, you know, sometimes if you're available to use um, video conferencing, that could be useful as well so that you can see hands and faces and understand a little bit more of what's going on with body language. So be open to different ways, even if it's uncomfortable for you, okay? It's not always comfortable for me to be looking at this mug while I talk to myself in my office, okay? And nobody's more tired of this face than me, okay? Just so we're clear. Um, all right, so I'd actually like to start with a little bit of a personal story. Um, I have children. Um, I came home one day from work and was busily trying to get dinner ready. I had several things that needed to be accomplished after work that day. Um, my children were playing in another room. I hear a screaming eruption, hear a pop, and then I have to go in and handle that situation, right? It's actually conflict, um, but it started with miscommunication. So I took my older son, took him to time out. We had actually been spending a lot of time talking about feelings and how to appropriately communicate your feelings because that is one of the reasons that he was more aggressive than we liked in our household, okay? So after he calms down, we go and I just basically say, Seems like you're angry, right? Um, because hitting is a sign of anger. And we have been working on this with him and he said, no, I'm disappointed. I'm like, about what? <laughs> and he actually goes into a story about something that happened earlier at school, um, got called to the board to answer a math problem. He likes math, he feels like it's he's good at it answered it wrong and he felt like the class had made fun of him, had made, um, had, you know, he had embarrassed himself. Um, and he said that's why he hit. And that's not acceptable behavior, um, but I had to give him some kudos for saying thank you so much for telling me how you're actually feeling, what's actually going on. So we talk a little bit at at Fleet and Family about some secondary emotions and anger is actually a secondary emotion. So think about an iceberg. Um, and at the surface level, you really only see maybe this much of the iceberg, but way below is much more. There's a big wide base and much more that's going on than what you see at the surface. So anger is like that, sadness is like that. There are several, um, there are several emotions that are secondary emotions. So what he is, was demonstrating was anger, what he was really, so demonstrating up here anger, what he was really feeling was disappointment and embarrassment. So I was glad I got to, um, to get to that emotion because then I could treat the root cause. Um, and then when we treat the cause, then we can get rid of the symptom. So for example, I might actually have like a rash 
caused by eating something that I'm allergic to. If I just keep treating the rash with cream, it keeps coming back and coming back. Um, whereas if I just eliminate the actual cause, then I won't have a rash anymore. So we wanna talk about that. And there's a really simple um, step process that you can use to find out what kind of emotion someone's feeling, make them feel heard and understood, and then figure out what your next steps are after you've determined that. So I wrote this out for you. Um, now, some of, sometimes when I teach this, I have people come back and say, well, this seems like it's just gonna make my conversations longer. Um, I don't necessarily have time to do this. And what I wanna say is not necessarily every time you have a conversation, however, you will save that time in not having as many miscommunications and making other people feel understood and heard when you converse with them. So I've written this down for you. The first step is um, when you're having a conversation with someone is to ask um, a series of open-ended questions. Open-ended questions will facilitate the flow of information. So that example I use with my son, I wouldn't say something like, it seems like you're angry, because that's a yes or no question. I could say, why are you angry? And that's when he can say, I'm not angry, okay? So we can ask some questions, you know, what happened? Why did you feel like that was a good um, way to deal with the situation you were in? What happened before this happened? Um, so those are some ways that we can facilitate the conversation. While you're listening, you are not going to necessarily be thinking, how am I going to solve this problem for this person? You will just be listening to identify the feeling, okay? Just identify that one feeling and what is that feeling for that person. So I wrote some of uh, other feelings over here, discounted, frustrated, hurt, annoyed, angry. It could also be, proud, you know, a good feeling like, wow. I would be really proud too if I did that really difficult math problem in front of everyone. So once we identify the feeling, we wanna check for understanding to make sure that we have the communication where this person see, feels heard and understood by me, the listener. And so then that way they can either confirm or deny and make sure that we actually are on the same page. After that time, we will then follow up and there's a really good video. If you have the time and you have access to YouTube, watch this video called It's Not About the Nail. And what's really going on in that situation, it's between a, um, like a couple. And this uh, one person is trying to describe a feeling. And the listener is only listening, is only waiting until they're done to say, well, it's because you have a nail. She has a nail in her head. Um, so sometimes when we are talking with someone, they just need to go through the process of, of getting it out. Like, I just am having this feeling right now. You are someone that I want to communicate with. Um, and I just want to work through it with you and have you as a sounding board. So that would be offering just support. Okay. Or we can offer guidance. All right. So Maybe in a situation like a, I'm thinking of a specific work situation, okay? Um, if you are talking to someone and like say you go to your chief and you're having um, marital problems and uh, you maybe need some additional help. Uh, in that particular situation, and this is, I'm going to put myself in there too. I teach life skills classes, but I'm not a counselor. When someone comes to me with marital issues, I kind of will just say, Oh, well, when did you start feeling that way? Um, how long have you been feeling this way? Have you tried anything that has helped? Have you tried anything that hasn't helped? This will facilitate the conversation. So again, later when we're having that conversation about marital problems, wow, I would feel really disappointed if that happened to me. That would hurt my feelings. Um, is that how you're feeling? And then we check for understanding. And then in that issue with marital problems, again, I'm not a counselor. I'm just going to offer support. I'm glad you told me I don't really know how to fix that issue, um, but I can offer you some additional services if you need help. Now, again, if I, I'm a mother, so I offer guidance to my children when they have issues. But for some things like them having a problem with someone on the playground, I might just say, 
that's a difficult thing to go through. Um, I'm not going to offer you guidance because that's something you have to work through as a second grader. Um, I'm just going to support you and say, I think it was a good thing that you decided to go play with someone else when someone was frustrating you. So I suggest just trying this out in some of your relationships, see how it goes, um, and I'll catch you for the next video. Bye!